will just do a short introduction and then it's all yours. Okay, good afternoon. I hope you had a really, really amazing time at the Mood and Mood Global so far. My name is Katarzyna Podotska and I will be the moderator for this upcoming session. So I want to welcome you to our next session, Ask Martin Anything session with Martin Dugiamas and Thomas Corner. Please feel free to come up with a lot of great and especially crazy questions for the two of them. So no further introduction needed. I pass on the mic to Martin and Thomas. Well, thank you very much, Kasia. Um, I need to introduce oh, yeah. Amy, who is uh, joining me as a member of the MUA committee, since this session is held by, uh, on behalf of the Moodle Users Association. Very warm well, welcome to you, Martin. We have collected several questions. And oh. I, I'm sure they're coming some more uh, in this session. Uh, I fear that 40 minutes are not enough. So let's jump right into it. Um, I had a very interesting question. The COVID crisis is all around and um, it has been a very hard time for us all. What do you think uh, Moodle's performance, is Moodle a winner or a loser of this crisis? Well, is something good or bad? Is it, uh, uh, um, you know, black or white? Um, it's a mix of lots of things. It's a complicated situation. Um, so what we've been seeing is like a lot more people getting into e-learning and um, very fast and with very little preparation. And so they're going, oh, hey, marketplace, what have you got for us? And they're going to everything. So everything that's out there has been getting a lot more attention. Um, so the yes, there's been a lot more Moodle stuff going on. Um, in a couple of months, our registered sites went from 100,000 to 150,000. And then they kind of leveled off again. Now, they, now they're rising very slowly again. Um, but also a lot of people went to Microsoft Teams, went to Google Classroom, went to uh, Zoom, went to uh, WeChat, went to all kinds of little things all over the place. Um, and then it's quite interesting, you know, at first they're like, oh, you know, using Zoom all day is really hard. And, you know, you hear those sort of stories from teachers trying to be in a classroom on Zoom all day. And then, and then now I'm sort of picking up more well, how do I manage my assignments? And like, how do I keep track of all my students? And like, how do I know they're doing anything? And then, oh, you know, maybe you need to learn a, a learning management system. <laughs> um, so I, it, it feels like now um, there are a lot of people going, well, okay, those quick solutions weren't enough. Uh, what else is there? And, and we're still seeing a lot of uptake. One problem though, is that with a lot of the quick and easy solutions, they're very cheap or free. And so now everyone's accustomed to thinking, well, I need to have everything for free. And that's a difficult situation to be in when we already give away Moodle code for free and always have, but services aren't free and people aren't free. And you can't just go to a .com and get it for free all the time because it costs money somewhere. So, um, yeah, it's been a very interesting, a very interesting time. I, I hope out of this, we get a lot more, at least, uh, appreciation for the kind of work that our community has been doing for 20 years. And just having a look in, into the future, um, do you see any substantial change, uh, because of this crisis for the Moodle roadmap? Well, I, you know, it's always been on the uh, high on what people talk about is make it easy for new people. Um, Moodle to a new person should be easier. It should be simpler. We all agree. I don't think anyone disagrees with that. Um, but where I think only some of us are thinking is, but we don't want to throw away all the complexity. We want to keep all those little things because that's 20 years of work of like useful stuff. Um, so how do we keep the complexity, but make it simple for a new user? That's the challenge. Uh, and that's the challenge of Moodle 4.0 is, you know, essentially that, um, and that's even sharper now. Now we have a lot of new people. Those new people want simple. Uh, if we want to be 
if if we want to stand up against a Google Classroom or a Microsoft Teams, we have to uh, be as simple as those um, for a new person. Very good. Um, so Martin, I'll just put the next question out. Um, when Moodle started in the early 2000s, what users expected was a website and Moodle did that very well. Um, giving the teacher the tools to build a website for their course was essential for teachers. And Moodle was ahead of the game with that. Um, it was doing web 2.0 before 2.0 was a thing. But now we're in 2020 and what users expect on the internet is shaped by social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, things of that nature. Um, I think it's fair to say that Moodle hasn't necessarily kept up with those changing expectations. Do you think it should? Should that be a goal for Moodle? Or do yeah. you think that, uh, what do you think a, like a VLE for the 2000, you know, 2020 should look like or should be like? Well, look, look at how we use our devices. You know, we're sitting here on these little things and at least 50% of the time we're in a chat. Mm -hmm. um, and that chat might be um, like a, a Telegram or Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or WeChat or those sorts of ones. Or it could be um, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, which are, are very chat-like these days, more and more so. Um, and that is that is what people are used to, that's what they want. And, and in, look, internally, I'm the one pushing the most for, for revamping our messaging um, mm -hmm. platforms. I don't get a lot of that from the Moodle community. I don't hear the MUA going messaging, 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 like it never comes up. They want, you know, uh, well, you know, we want MUA, we want to, uh, you know, fix this grade book thing or this participants page or it's management C type things. But the actual core experience is not something that I hear a lot about. And um, even amongst developers, like they're like, we're not going to build a whole messaging chat system. And I'm, and I'm, I agree with them. Like, I'm not happy with the messaging we have in Moodle now, which was me, me pushing that on the roadmap to say, let's focus on messaging internally to some degree, because it was pretty bad before. Um, now it's better, but it's still not where it should be. Um, what I really think we need to do is find the best open source messaging platform we can that includes video and audio and make sure that is integrated tightly with Moodle. Uh, and so, you know, I quite like uh, uh, Jitsi and um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Matrix, like Matrix messaging is pretty, is pretty very good. It's very federated, it's open, um, good standard. Um, the, the apps are not quite as slick as they could be, but they, they'll get there. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and there's things built on top of that. People are building on top of that standard. Uh, Michael's saying rocket chat in here. Um, yeah, I played with that quite a bit. It's, it's okay, but I think we have to get out of the idea of our institution is a silo and we only want to build a chat for our institution and start thinking about how would our messaging work more globally just to be more flexible so we could have you know, maybe six Moodle sites, um, which are all part of some association and we want them all to talk to each other and it should be, they, you should be able to open it up and let that happen. And, you know, maybe you want to be connected to MoodleNet all the time, or, you know, maybe you just want all these scenarios to be possible. So we need something that's a big standard and we shouldn't build that again. We should just find the right thing and connect to it. Um, uh, I'm, I'm personally always talking about that and trying to push it onto the roadmap. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of influence on the road now. Just jump in here. Uh, we got a, a question from a MUA member uh, preparing this event, um, asking, are there any efforts on the way now or coming in the near future to work on the most core functionality? So not talking about adding features, but working UX, core, and things like that. And was this the reason to really make this full stop before 4.0? or yeah, uh, does it have anything absolutely. to do with that? Yep. Um, so there's about 50% of the effort, I think, for the next 18 months will be the low-hanging fruit, as we call them, the little obvious things. So like uh, an example, on this very website where we are, that we messaging thing that comes out. Martin. Oh, hello. 
I'm yep. still here. Yeah, yeah, you're here again. Um, so I'll give you the simplest example on the messaging thing that pops out when you click on the little talk thing on this, this website, it comes out. The first time you see that you have no idea how to close it. Like you're looking for an X or something to push the draw back in and it's just not there. And you have to hit the, the talk icon again, which makes no sense. It doesn't work like anything else on the planet. And like, that's a simple thing to fix. That's a low hanging fruit. I think there are hundreds of those little things that would just make people's lives easier. Um, and it's not a lot of work to, to design it or it's just doing it. The other 50% are the big things. And they're like, what is the whole workflow of teaching in 2022? Um, like, um, for me, when I look at the student experience, it's terrible. Both my, both my kids are teenagers who use Moodle. So I, I just ask them and I watch them. Uh, they have, you know, six teachers all giving them stuff. Those teachers don't know about each other's stuff. There's no way for Moodle to tell the other teachers what, you know, there's no shared calendar or anything like that. Um, and even if there was a particular student at a university will have different sets of six or 10 subjects all overlapping. So the teachers can't do it. So what the what the student needs is some way to manage all of their time. It's a time management problem. And, um, this thing coming from teacher a, it might be a 10 minute task. And this thing coming from teacher B, might be a three weeks work worth of work, giant assignment. Um, how does the student take that and put it sensibly into their life? Um, they need some sort of a task management that involves their calendar, which involves their work and their, their family life. And also they need to plan. So if it's a three week assignment and it's due in, you know, six weeks, you have to spend about half of your time working on this assignment. So make sure you schedule that in every week. Um, and we have nothing like that in Moodle and yet there are tools out there, study managers and my daughter is very good. She's very conscientious, the best student you've ever seen. She goes out and researched all these study managers and she said, this one's the best one. And it's, it's, you know, I was studying the interface of it and it's no rocket science, just, um, things we could do and it would make millions of students lives easier. So yeah, I, I think there's a lot to do there. Um, but we are going very wide with a net on the UX. Uh, we, we have workshops coming up. We're running now and they're running for weeks and weeks and weeks. We want everyone to really think about the big core problems and let's get them all on the table and work them out. We, we, we have a slight problem, you see, cause when we go out and ask people things, if you talk to ex expert Moodlers, they focus on the low hanging fruit because they know Moodle very, very well. And that this annoys me and they want to fix that little thing. And if you talk to people who don't know Moodle, they ask for all kinds of crazy stuff because they don't know what Moodle is or what, what rough area we're talking about. Um, you know, so they'll say, Oh, we want a voice assistant. To, you know, I want to talk to my phone and say, uh, help me with my assignment or something. And, um, uh, yeah. Well, so uh, you hired a new marketing lead, uh, a new uh, UX lead, which is uh, kind of ex exp well predestinated to do that, right? So yes, um, I. It's been very hard to find a good UX lead. We've we've had hired a couple and they didn't work out. But Candice really is a great person. She's really, uh, and she's an organizer. Um, uh, I think she has some, she might have some German background like I do. That's probably part of it. Um, but we, we, uh, she's really organizing the, uh, the, the process, the UX process we're going to go through and bring us all along on the journey. And at the end of the process, we hopefully have a very good plan for the 4.0 roadmap. Yeah. Sorry, I can so, talk forever. You know me. I've got to stop. Me. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I'm going to go. Um, so, um, you know, you've talked about some of, of your vision of where Moodle is going to go and what the roadmap is. Um, could you kind of give a brief overview of what's being done by Moodle for open education and support for sustainable development goal number four? And how, as individual MUA members, can we contribute to that effort? Yeah. Well, good one. Um, so the, 
Look, f number one is MoodleNet. MoodleNet is the open education resources um, part. Uh, so my, my vision for it is like up here, the, the team was working on like step one of the 10 steps. Uh, we didn't even get to the step one this month that I really wanted to see. So um, I'm a little disappointed with the speed of MoodleNet development. Um, and we could talk more about that after, but the, the concept eventually, the vision, if you like, is something like Wikipedia, but focused on collections of resources. And ideally in the future, if you do a Google search for any topic, it says, oh, here's the Wikipedia page on it. Oh, and here's a MoodleNet page on it. And the MoodleNet page takes you straight in there and you find, oh, here are a bunch of really great resources about that topic. So not just a description of the topic like in Wikipedia, but here is a website, here is a, some videos, here are the um, whole Moodle course, etc. And that will be really useful for students as well as teachers. So a student studying that topic will go, oh, wow, here's things I can like look at and, and read and so on that have been collected by teachers and curated. Um, but then teachers as well will have a lovely place to start when they're creating courses for that topic. Um, I love them. Sorry. I don't, I, th nothing like that exists. Like it needs to exist and uh, we, we need to make it happen because uh, I think um, that will highlight all the OER that's sitting out there in little silos and bring it together. And, you know, everyone talks like that at OER, oh, we could all bring it all together. But like, I feel like the Moodle community has a shot because we're, we're big enough. And with the connection with an LMS, it's actually directly usable. It's not like, oh, you know, somebody spent half a million dollars building the uh, OER combiner platform sitting over, over there. Um, it's like, oh, no, this is in my tool. This is literally built in out of the box on my LMS so I can go and start using it. And if we get a couple of million people using it by next year, it'll be going, you know, we could really get it going. We just need the, uh, we just need to get the platform <laughs> to a point where it's usable. Can you get this as a, as a date next year? Because a lot of our members are, have, have been disappointed. Yeah. On Monday morning when you announced that uh, it will be postponed and they're really looking forward to it as you do. What is the yeah. internal roadmap? What do you think next year? Oh, what, when I say next year, I mean, next year, full of content, like very okay. useful. Um, uh, we, we're going to work very hard over the next few months to get, uh, the, the Moodle net software up to scratch. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's disappointing. Uh, what happened with the team, uh, you know, one person left, then another, then the whole team left. They were kind of, they, the problem was that they were never really connected with the Moodle, well, Moodle HQ or the Moodle community. They kind of operated in their own little vacuum. And uh, I let them do that because a lot of them come from social media. They come from, uh, you know, the, um, Mastodon world and that background is good. Um, and I was, it's kind of a, in software development, we call it a skunk works project. So it's where you, you know, you give resources to a small group of people and you say, go for it. And I, I kind of let them do that. And they did things in different ways. They weren't, they didn't want to do it the way we developed Moodle core. They see that as like oh, old fashioned, big processes. We want to be small and light and nimble and like, okay, you know, do it how you want, show us, prove to us that it can work, prove to us. You know, if you deliver a great, amazing product that everyone likes, it's going to be a great thing. Um, and unfortunately we couldn't really see the product until quite recently because there's a front end and a back end. And if one of them is broken, the other one doesn't work. And, um, so only recently we actually got a look at it and it became very apparent that it was missing very basic things and, um, that they were a long way from being finished. And I, I think the team was kind of recognizing it wasn't going how even they would have liked. So a lot of them just abandoned and they didn't really feel like very close to the Moodle world. You know, they were just contractors working on a little thing. Um, so I've, I've learned a lesson, which is not to do that again. Um, and that to make sure that we, we're much more integrated, that it's the Moodle communities really involved in a way here, um, that our Moodle developers are really involved. Um, because 
yeah, we, we, we're all, it's, it's part of the Moodle platform, right? Moodle net, it's got to be really part of it. So we'll get there. Um, I think what we have is usable. There's actually a meeting tomorrow, a Moodle net meeting, which I'd love anyone who's interested to come along to talk more about this. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be in these, in the networking cafe. We're going to use that for a, a big meeting for the first time. So it'll be fun. It will be our lunchtime uh, at the same time as our yeah. Moodle Link Association UX. Over lunch. So show. bring me so lunch. Once if, again. If you're in the lunch time zone. Um, okay. So kind of um, building on that, you, you had mentioned in the summer of 2019 that there would be some working groups for higher ed. And I know that higher ed is very invested in OER, at least in the United States, and also in MoodleNet. So there's a big push in higher ed here for MoodleNet. So what will, we haven't heard much about those working groups since. Um, so what will happen with that working group or in general, how do you plan to gather feedback and needs from universities to kind of move these projects forward? Yeah, um, those were an initiative of our CPO at the time, Chief Product Officer, uh, Gree Steen. Um, it, she was running them and uh, we were waiting to hear what was happening, all of us, and uh, I'm not sure how far that went. Um, and Gree uh, left after a year at the end of last year um, a lot was going on and no one had the responsibility for keeping that going. So we, we, we didn't to, to me, I think the MUA is this group. Um, the MUA is the higher ed focus group. If you like, it's mostly higher ed, uh, our UX workshops also are going to have, um, a lot of people from different fields. So when, uh, from different sectors, um, so we're gathering it all there. Uh, they're just general open, sessions for everybody um we we are mostly still um as you can tell from attendance at moodle moots um a higher ed focused platform moodle um but it's very interesting with uh, uh workplace and some of the other things that it, you know like there was a presentation earlier with the un you know and their blue line academy thing with four thousand learners from all across the united nations you know those um those kind of users are really interesting as well and the sorts of things they're doing are really you know we want to we want to work for all of these things um but definitely higher ed is where my heart is because that's the the basis for making the world a really better place like you know universities for me, a super important place to prepare um, the citizens of the future. And, and we need to really help those teachers as much as we can, especially because they're all under attack. Funding being dropped, being trying to force into training organizations. Um, and it's something we can actually do that will help a lot. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll leave it there. <laughs> um, well, the, the MUA has a, has a lot of individual members who are representing, well, individual classes or K-12 or whatever, and they mostly struggle to really go for Moodle Workplace and get these kind of uh, tools which are there, as well as most of European universities cannot or don't contract with, with partners, but run Moodle on their own. So a lot of questions have been around about the, the roadmap of, of tools which are in the workplace making available for, for these, these guys who, who are not able or not willing to, to give away the whole um, um, managing rights of, of the platform and things like that. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Because, uh, yeah, we are seeking for a lot of functionalities like this kind of groupings and, and all these managing things which we yeah see at the moment with this, this event platform and working on that. Yeah, I, I've been having a lot of fun playing with this event platform. I've, I've been very involved in the building of everything you're, you're seeing here. Um, it's, uh, and it's so much fun using Moodle and workplace for it. Like I'm, I'm a, having a ball, uh, even when I'm up at five in the morning, trying to do some CSS. So, uh, We've got, look, if you look at our numbers, you know, Moodle is the mainstream LMS platform, but the, the development, the core development team, you know, is 
40, 50 people, you know, if you include managers and everything around it, um, it's tiny, really tiny. And that's all we can afford because we give away our software. Um, we're, we're stacking up, considering the difference between, you know, other, other platforms uh, and software projects, we'll have thousands of developers on staff, like paid in project management, you know, um, whereas we have this small core team and we have a lot of community doing their own thing, loosely managed, we work together and that's how open source works and it's brilliant. You know, we, we, we do a lot with very little in terms of funding, but, um, it is always a struggle. We, we, we could definitely use more. I want to, I want to make everyone happy. I think everyone deserves to have the, you know, the, our software should literally be easily, uh, to everyone who looks at it, the best possible thing, the best package. Um, but to get there, we need more resources. And so I am very, as a CEO, I'm constantly, in fact, way too much of my time, 80% of my time, I'm thinking about how to fund everything and business stuff, not product stuff. I would love to spend the other way around 80% of my time on product stuff, but instead it's all about business. We always trying to do that. And so the workplace approach was a way to fund Moodle core. So workplace is something that people will pay for. Um, and we are not trying to, we're not saying to universities, we want you to go to workplace. We've made it very labeled. It's for workplaces. <laughs> um, so we're sort of saying, here's some things some that, that you can't get elsewhere. If you pay for it, you'll get them and you'll help fund the Moodle project. And, um, we have a plan to, you know, those features all dropping into core over time and every release we've put some workplace features in every single release since workplace started and we have more coming in every release to come. So it's just kind of the advanced version that you can get, but I'm hundred percent committed to keeping them, um, in sync. So they, that there'll never be, uh, there'll never be a time when that is uh, like a separate product so that forks or something or, um, that, you know, it, it's, it's all about Moodle core. Moodle core is like the big, it's the big golden apple that we need to be focused on. And this is just ways of funding it. So you talked about bringing some of those workplace features over into core. I know lots of people really like, you know, the UX and things in workplace. Um, kind of along that line, is there a plan to uh, create the ability to have customization at the category level in core going forward? Right now, it's just not very easy to kind of have theme one for sciences, theme two for maths, for example. Um, is that something that we might be able to see in the future? Uh, you can't set themes at category level. I thought you could actually. Maybe it's just in workplace. Not on your chat. You can. You can. It's just okay. not quite as um, intuitive, I think, as maybe people um, would hope for. I think is the question. Well, you know, intuitive is a difficult word. Uh, is it intuitive to a student who has to move between different classes and different areas that the whole interface changes everywhere, everywhere they go it might right. not be. Um, mm -hmm. So it, there's always different angles on these things. Um, mm -hmm. Generally, yeah, Tim's saying there, you have to turn on the option if anyone right. hasn't got it, but it is, it is there. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not aware of anything particular on the roadmap, but I guess if it came up a lot in the, in these workshops we're doing, then that would help. Um, we have, uh, there has been a lot of questions around in the forum and in the chat, as you can imagine, uh, I will pick yeah. up just, just some of them. Uh, one is about accessibility. Um, just yep not find it anymore at uh, the VCAG 2.1. Um, that's, yeah, that's, uh, I think that's about uh, accessibility. What are, uh, what goals would you like to achieve with accessibility? What would you say is, is, is crucial for Moodle? Hmm. Well, we've just done a lot of accessibility work. We had an external review. There was a talk earlier from June, if anyone hasn't seen it, covering all the accessibility work in detail from the team, um, quite a lot of focus on that. And, um, one of the things you're not seeing yet is we're planning an integration, 
of a con accessibility for the content. So an accessibility checker in the content. And um, it was meant to land in this release. It'll land in a very short, in a release in a very short time, maybe in a point release. Um, but uh, that's important. That's kind of where a lot of the accessibility goes wrong is the, the content that teachers and people make um, in the system. Uh, so yeah, we've got to make, make sure that's going, but it's definitely an important part. Um, but like with a small team, you know, we, we could spend all our time on accessibility all the time and then we wouldn't be doing anything else. So we kind of have to balance as we move forward on a lot of fronts as well. I, I, I think though, you know, objectively, if you look at the accessibility of Moodle against a lot of other systems, it's quite good, um, the, from previous work that's been done. We focus on the negatives, but there is a lot of positives too. Um, um, well, there's a question I want to answer there from Karen, actually. If I could pick that, one out. That would have been the next one, in fact. Um, yeah. And and really, uh, I, I see the same the same problem. Walking around, somebody says, ah, oh, I heard um, there are some people left at Moodle HQ. Moodle HQ is at the end of his life. What would you answer them? What, how can we prove that we are sitting on the right boat? Oh, look, hiring people is difficult. Anyone here who hires people, um, uh, especially in a global organization, we have people who are like 12 hours out of sync with the rest of the team. And it's difficult. Um, it, internally, we've been working really hard on this. So we have a, a, some new ways of managing our work that we'd never had before that we've done this year. So for example, um, we're using a, a system of OKRs, which are objectives and key results. And we've set at the beginning of the year, our management team, which is about 15 people, um, have set goals for the whole company. And those translate into team goals. And then they translate down into individual goals. And now we're using a, um, a software package to track all our objectives and we map key results against them. So everybody knows when we meet objectives because there's a result, a measurable result. And it could be, you know, there are a thousand people registered to that thing or, um, you know, so many dollars were made, but it could also be um, some quality level of, of something. Um, and so you have this structure of objectives and key results and then in, in, in every kind of uh, uh, team member and their manager relationship, we have like one-to-one -one meetings now on a weekly basis. So all through that tree, uh, there's all these one-to-one -one meetings and, and the meetings are about, well, how are we tracking against the objectives and are we reaching any key results? And let's update the, the information in the tree so that everyone knows what's going on. And, and we get, we, so this is a way of getting way more organized and definite than we had before. Um, now, take the, go back to the history of Moodle, which was, you know, me hacking um, with a, a loose collection of people around the community who got into it as well. And it was like, you know, a lawyer would say, oh, I really want to fix the backup system. And I'm like, yeah, go for it, mate. And like, he goes and fixes it and builds a backup system because he's hacking away for a month. And stuff would just happen and it was very flat. And we didn't have to worry about objectives and key results. It was a, a smaller kind of more hack, hacker ethos. Um, just, but just to prevent the kind of yeah. problems that we've been seeing, we're finding we need to impose a, a much more structure. And so we have been doing that. And I think that's really going to avoid the problem. So MEC, for example, you know, I trusted people to do a good job on that. And um, when it turns out that uh, something's delivered that isn't isn't meeting the levels of quality and we have to start again. Um, it's really sad, but I have to make the hard decision to do that and spend more time on it rather than just delivering something rubbish. You know, I'm very happy with MEC now and the current team are fantastic and the MEC is like, you know, good now and MoodleNet will be the same. So, and look, sometimes people leave because their life is changing and that's fine too, you know, totally fine. That happens. Everyone, everybody should have that freedom. 
I just think it's it's a thing about confidence. And uh, Karen asked about uh, whether you think that the, or what do you think with people who lose who are starting to lose confidence in Moodle, and that's, that's yeah. I think quite important thing. So that I'm trying to explain that it's very important to me that that we have the confidence of the community that you know we're we are spending a lot of time on our human processes, managing a bunch of humans, you know, to write software uh, and and produce products for people to use. Yeah, we're just coming near the end. Um, Amy, oh. do you have? To... <laughs> You're on mute, Amy. Um, so I have one final question. Um, and that question is, you know, there has been some turnover with Moodle, as is with any company. Um, going forward, how do you envision the relationship with the MUA working? We aren't currently having um, regular liaison meetings, and I think that we kind of all understand there's a lot going on right now. But how do you envision us um, strengthening our working relationship together to meet those goals and objectives that both you have and the community has for Moodle? Well, there are some very clear OKRs uh, in Sonda's team for this. Um, so maybe Sonda wants to answer that. <laughs> but um, yeah, we, the, the original design of the MUA was um, that we interacted on fairly specific points of the process. Um, I, I didn't want us to be all up in your grill um, all the time. It was kind of like, you guys give us what you need and, and, and we'll figure out a way of making it happen. So um, I think over time and with uh, uh, some of the, the the people in the MUA in the past few years, there's been a definite shift towards, well, let's have a more closer working relationship. And I, I think that's a good thing that we, we do need to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm, you know, uh, anytime I've been invited to speak with the MUA, I'm, I'm there. Um, and, and I hope the team is, everyone in the team is the same. Uh, but in the end, uh, the MUA needs to figure out what it wants what it needs actually, not wants, needs <laughs> from Moodle and make that very clear to us uh, because yeah, we, we can't get involved with when it's at a, oh, here are a thousand things that need doing level. Like we already have that. It's called the tracker. We have thousands of things to do level already. We want the MUA to just give us one thing to do. Um, so you hopefully, uh, the MUA is working that, that process out too. Thank you. Sandra, do you have anything to add? You jumped in with your cam. Uh, no, I just, uh, I guess Martin called me out. Look, I, um, I, I sort of agree with Martin's last statement that it'd be great if, if, you know, rather than 10 or 20 things, we get one or two things from the MUA and can focus on that a bit more in detail. Um, in, in the past, we uh, have had several people more closely involved in managing the relationship with the MUA and staying on top of the projects. Uh, in the past year or so, that has mostly fallen on me and together with all the other things that I juggle, that's, that's quite a challenge. Um, but um, we're putting some extra people on the team, for example, um, Kate, who you've all met. Uh, she's gonna be helping out a bit more with that sort of stuff too. So I hope we can sort of pull things together and, and streamline things as we go forward. Well, um, we come to an end with a very last question. I think it it it's it has been in the in the forum, and it's uh, it, it remembers me a little bit. We are still people. We are, we are not only working machines. And uh, somebody asked, Martin, did you already move to Barcelona? Yeah. Look, I'm not going to. I don't think now. Um, what with the coronavirus. Uh, and you know, even before the coronavirus, I, I would, you know, I was traveling, I went 12 times around the world last year in distance. And that was very uncomfortable for me in terms of all of my carbon impact. And I was thinking, uh, you know, I'm not, I, I was justifying it like, well, you know, we are working on platforms that save uh, people traveling and, you know, it's a plus and minus thing, but you know, it's not a good example. And, 
I would much rather spend the time working on things like this conference. And like, for me, this is how we should do all our moots ongoing. Um, this event, this, this event site is actually in my mind, a new, a new product, a Moodle events product. Um, already got a lot of plans for version three. Um, and the idea is you would, we would just make it available as a venue to anyone who wants to hold an event, you would come in and you would set up all the, the conference, the speakers, the, the sessions, it remotely controls Moodle and creates courses and forums and links everything up and it makes a, you know, a, a really nice experience and, um, you just use it. And, uh, I, I think with this sort of stuff going on, we don't, I don't need to be traveling so much at all. And a lot of the reason for me going to Barcelona was to be closer to Europe and closer to the rest of the world. Um, right now I'm very glad I'm here in a, in the country where I have, you know, I'm a citizen here, have full health care. You know, if I was in Spain right now, I would be an immigrant, uh, and a coronavirus and everything. I would be an immigrant dealing with the Spanish healthcare system. It's not quite as convenient. Right. Um, and if all I need to do to be with you is just stay up late some nights, well, that's, that's a pretty small thing. So yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably, but I will visit like, sometimes I'll probably do a world tour every now and then we have a plan for a, a Moodle documentary where we travel around uh, and visit all these really cool places in, in all countries where Moodle stories are and bring a cameraman. The one that, that you, that uh, Kasia, you introduced me at the Vienna moot, that guy, I was speaking to him. He was keen for it. I think we could make a really good Moodle documentary if we all work together. Okay, thank you very much. We're just over the time already. Uh, thank you, Martin, okay. for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for asking the question. And I would love to see continue these uh, discussions on the conference or within the MUA. And um, yeah, just continue what you said. Stay healthy and see you soon. Thank you very much. Yeah, everyone stay well. Thanks for joining in. I'm having a great week. I hope you are too. All right.